October, everybody. October 3rd. How the heck can we be in October? I'm still in a t-shirt and I'm wearing shorts. I, I won't dip the camera down, but I'm actually still wearing shorts. I uh, went for two walks today. It was uh, plus, tw uh, it was about 20. Um, for my American friends, double it and add 30. So that's uh, 40, about 70-ish. Um, I say that because my guest tonight is the incredible Jenna Behrman. I hope I'm saying that last name right, Behrman. I have to ask her when I bring her on. Um, who is an incredible um, intuitive, I don't even know. I'm going to call her a channeler because that's. I think that's what she does. But we're going to talk about it and uh, talk about what she's doing and um, how she got to where she got, she is. So without further ado, I'm going to just click this button over here. And people who know me know how great I am with technology. Look at that. She just pops up. Ah, I'm here. Magic. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you for coming on. Now, I was telling people the temperature. It's 20 degrees. It was 23-ish. Um, so that's, I think, about 75 degrees down there, something like that. Um, oh, I think you're frozen. Yeah, oh, that's right. That's where we're at. Oh, no. Yeah, it's been beautiful. Okay, um, right. Usually at this technology uh usually at this time of the year we're i'm wearing my hoodie and um we got snow but um so far touch wood none of the s word yet this it's coming i know snow. it's coming oh yeah we'll get snow in september lots of times yeah 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 oh, um too early i just picked all my um just picked all my tomatoes off our tomato plants in the backyard today um because it's starting to get nice. chilly at night. It's getting down to that 32-ish Fahrenheit, zero here. So picked them all. Pretty proud of my tomatoes. I should have taken a picture and showed everybody because I'm pretty happy with my tomatoes you're, you're this year. Babies. <laughs> I, did, I, I am. And it's like I walk by them. There are lots, we have lots of little cherries, tomatoes. So I just grab them and eat them just because it's just their, mind, their mind. <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, hey. exactly. <laughs> I've tried to grow oh, things better. before. I have the brown thumb. Not a green one. <laughs> That's, yeah, I'm not the best with, with plants. Eh. No. I try. No. I do okay, but I'm not stellar. Did I get your last name right? Is it Beerman or Beerman? Oh, it's Beerman, so close. It, oh, yeah. I was close. Beer. I didn't want to say beer because I'm that I would want to drink a beer. But no, I don't have beer in here. It's water, folks. It's water. <laughs> Although sure. this show would this show would take on a whole new concept if we actually started drinking it could be beer. Fun. We should yeah, do that one time. Spirit. <laughs> spirit I think I might spirit. do that. I, I, the, the spirit spirit show. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I can just see now. my mentor, Ken Lewicki, is probably just going, oh, my God, what has he done? <laughs> <laughs> oh. fun. So we talked a little bit before we came live. We have met before. We've, we've taken, I, I would take, it was probably Ken's courses, one of Ken's courses together. So, because it was a while back, I think so. Yeah, probably level one or two, if my memory probably. serves me correct. Yeah, and I'm maybe. old, and my memory doesn't work that well anymore. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> Good enough. We we did we have met. She she was there when I started my journey. How's that? Now speaking there of journey, you how how you like that for a segue? Eh, that was good. Oof. You're professional. <laughs> No, 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 don't ever say that. Because <laughs> everybody listening just howled. They probably spit their beer out their nose now. Kevin professional. <laughs> that's funny. Um, entertaining. Entertaining. That That's a good word, entertaining. Where did, when did Jenna first realize this is what Jenna wanted to do or needed to do? Yeah, um, so I was one of those kids that um, had that ability to, view spirit and all of that, but I didn't understand it. And it was terrifying. Um, and I yeah. didn't have anyone to talk to, so I didn't talk about it. So that was even harder. And yeah. then I had some, you know, religious background and that was even like, made it sound like it was like devil's work and all kinds of stuff. So I, I had all these confusing messages and it, so I shut it down. Um, and then in 2008, when my dad died, like the floodgates opened, I couldn't keep it back. Oh, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. See, that's yeah. very similar. Uh, it was 2009 when my brother died, and that really changed a lot for me. 
Um, yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. That, that's kind of strange that we're so similar. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And obviously you can tell folks we didn't talk about this beforehand. This is nope. just <laughs> going on, going off the cuff. Um, Happy accident. Exactly. So 2008, you, lo you lost your dad. I'm so sorry for that, by the way. Oh, thank um, you. Have you ch have you been able to channel your dad since? I'm going to jump way ahead. Yep. I know yeah. there's lots in between. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really my motivation, I think, to turning it back on is I was just so stricken with grief that I was desperate to talk to him. And I had gone to mediums and I knew I could do it, but I had buried it so deep that in all that grief, I couldn't access it. But then when you go to a medium, you know, it's, it just isn't the same thing. You just want to be able to talk when you want to. Yeah. So that was my motivation. Yeah. yeah. It's like picking up the phone. And, um, Pretty much, yeah. I, and I say that to my mom who is on the other side now. And, and it's like, I really miss being able to pick up the phone and talk to you. So when I did start channeling and it took a while for me, even after I started channeling to be able to channel my mom, um, there was a lot of stuff there. But anyways, when I finally sure. did, um, it is, it's just like picking up the phone and you're able to communicate, which is really, really, really cool. I'm glad, that with the, I'm glad that you use that verbiage because it is important. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So let's go back. I jumped way ahead. <laughs> so to 2008, I told you, we're going to be jumping all over the place. I blame oh, your guys, yeah. by the way. I, when I do these interviews, just for the audience knows, I actually channel and I channel my guides and I channel my guest guides. And um, they can take me wherever they want. So I just kind of follow where they go. Um, no, I don't have a list of questions. Everybody always asks me when I ask them, do they want to be on the show? And they're like, oh, can you send me a list of questions? And I'm like, no. Am I supposed to have a list of questions? <laughs> Is that the way this works? No, we just talk. Uh, so let's go back to 2008. What, yeah. what, did, what did you do? You just you went to mediums? Yep, I started, I went to mediums and did all that. And then um, I didn't realize it at the time I was channeling angels because um, I was just so desperate for help and like healing. And so I didn't realize who I was channeling. Now, I, looking back, I, I did. So that kind of all just happened like that. And then it just kind of rolled from there, I guess. Wow. So when did you actually, did you? Did you take the only training you took was when we met in 2020 or did you take uh, courses before that? No. Oh yeah. I had taken some courses before that and you know, they just, I had done some raking all that before, you know, the timing is so huge and it just clearly wasn't the right time. I wasn't picking it up and it just wasn't for me, but um, I always wanted to do just the kind of mediumships, but then in the last few years, so 2020 is when I kind of started taking all these healing courses and realizing, okay, I can have more control over what I'm doing versus just kind of screwing around, right? And exactly. I realized, you know what? That's my niche. Yeah, that's where I belong. Nice, nice. Now, I'm gonna, your guides are saying to take her farther back, so we're going to go farther back. Um, okay. As a kid, yeah, they're going to go back to when you were you were young, young. Um, sure. You, you were like me. They're making me feel um, where you used to. And I, I tell people blunt. Uh, I used to see dead people. Uh, it was uncanny. Mm -hmm. I couldn't explain it. Same way. Yep. Yep. And I did for a while. I think I was nuts because I had no one to talk to. And I'm like, maybe there's something wrong with me. Right. Because this isn't normal to hear, you know and see things and know things that other people don't. And it was just like, Ooh, I can't talk about that. Right. And my parents were um, overly religious, but they went to church and that, that would have been a very like, Ooh, that. <laughs> so oh, I was yeah. kind of, um, yeah, yeah. It's just, there's no one now to talk old, to. So how old were you then? Boy, the, when I could remember is probably, I would say starting at about age 11 because we moved into a different house. It was a much older house and there was activity there. So I think that's what triggered it. Um, oh, yeah. Before that, I had experiences, but nothing scary. And then it was like, oh, no, yeah. I take that back. I did that one <laughs> scary one. Um, this one is funny, but highly inappropriate. Um, so in 
Catholicism, you have to take these classes, you know, to learn how to be a good Catholic and all that stuff. Oh, were you um, raised a Roman Catholic? Well, yeah. yeah. Hilarious, right? <laughs> uh, well. Exact same. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, we had, so um, a bunch of us girls would go into the bathroom and just, you know, screw around and just get out of class, right? And um, somebody had the brilliant idea to do this whole, you say into the the mere Bloody Mary to, and it will appear. No! Uh, I was there. Um, kid you not, there was something <sighs> in the mirror, and that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I was done. <laughs> I'm like, it was like, get oh, it. I'm out. God. Yeah, so that was part of the stuffing before we moved, and then I guess that's when it came out. So previous experiences clearly weren't good. So yeah, I'm not gonna look at that, yeah. right? So yeah, it's funny, but not funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, mine, I can remember being a kid using a Ouija board with my with my siblings. Um, no idea, totally innocent. But then I would see yeah. things out of the corner of my eye that they wouldn't. And I wouldn't say anything because I'd be like, oh, that's creepy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and I look right. at them, they're not even acknowledging it. And I'm like, it's just me. So shut up. <laughs> right? Yeah. Fun. There, yeah. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Stifle yeah. it, bury it, go, especially in the Catholic Church Ooh, where you're yeah. not encouraged to ask questions. Big no, no. Oh, no, you couldn't ask questions. And I did. I asked a lot of questions. I was Me that too. I got more no. trouble. Yep. I went yep. to a Catholic elementary school Ooh. and I spent more time in the library writing out the Ten Commandments because. <laughs> I, I, I was not bad. I, I was. I'm still. I still ask questions, and people don't like Even it. Now. <laughs> I still. I'm still asking questions. That's a good one. <laughs> right. Um, we should be right, but yeah, that's not, not not encouraged in religion for sure. No, no, especially the Catholic Church. It's do what the guy up up front there. Do what he tells you. If not, you're going to that bad right. place. You know. Um. Sure. Teenage years, mm -hmm. buried it completely. Yeah, yeah. So teenage years were, were. I don't really remember a whole lot of interaction with the spiritual world. I, I do remember I would see once in a while, which now I understand were angels in that. But yeah. I didn't. I didn't know what to do with it. Right. I would just see it and then you know put the covers over my head <laughs> and hide out. Right. So I'm like, oh. Didn't see that. That didn't just happen. Nope. Um, That's not there. <laughs> and I could not sleep. Yeah. And in looking back now, I understand why I couldn't sleep. But I was, I could not sleep at night. It was horrible. So yeah. Yeah. Wish I'd had. I can remember those. That. I can remember those nights where it's like, uh, I'm, I'm not moving yep. these blankets. Nope. I know it's there. This is not happening. <laughs> right. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. Definitely. It's funny. I'm. I'm actually experiencing it all over again i haven't talked about this to a lot of people so i know probably ellison's downstairs listening going i've never heard any what? of this <laughs> surprise <laughs> yeah she knows when i moved in with her many years later her house was the most haunted house that you've ever lived in in your life like i'm not really? kidding this place was i would wake up at night there'd be people standing at, at the foot of our bed Ooh. i would throw the ball for the dog the dog would go running down this long hallway, turn around, come running back without the ball. And then 30 seconds later, a ball would come bouncing down the hallway. Oh, just freaky hey. stuff that you just kind of go, that's what is, what, I'm, burn the house down. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just start over. <laughs> it's not right. I wish I knew now what I, I wish I could go back because I could have helped so many of those souls because sure. a lot of them I think were lost. Um, yeah. I could have helped them cross over. Um, wow, we're just going way off. <laughs> it's tragic, though, right? When you look back, I wish I had had the tools then to, you know, to help. But we, we just well, didn't. yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, it, it was funny. I was talking to a client today about crossing someone over, and it's. I think it's our obligation as someone who knows, um, knows how to. It's yep. almost an obligation now. Wouldn't you agree that you, if you find a lost soul, yeah, haunted yep. houses wouldn't like us, Jenna? No, no. <laughs> but that is that's spiritual ethics. That's kind of a universal law, right? If you are in to help and you have the tool, I mean, you just have to do that. And, and why wouldn't you want to, right? Well, and as I always say to people, 
what if I'm doing a session um, with you and two weeks previous, I ran into your, your, uh, your, one of your parents who were a lost soul and I didn't cross them over. And then you come to do a reading and I can't find them. Nope. No one's home. No, it was like, hello. Nobody's answering the door because guess what? They're lost, literally. <laughs> yeah, they're in between realms. Not a good place to be. No, no. Um, I wonder what people are thinking. Like, they're probably tuning in going, what are these two people talking Where about? Where did this go? What the heck happened here? <laughs> Well, we're having See, a good time while it matters. It was, Jenna, it was your fault because you posted, you never know where this conversation will go. You yeah. posted that yesterday. I saw it and I'm like, okay, let's do it. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of the Jenna effect though. I just, I get into stuff. I'm just like that kind of, it just happens to me. I don't know. It happens. <laughs> I, oh my. Um, We're so much alike in our teenage years where it was like, bury it get rid of it because teenage i mean you're you're trying to be one of the group yeah. um you don't want to stand out so it's like no no that didn't happen put that down and then it did it go away for you as well yeah um i would still get the occasional you know little blip but it it was very um random and, and i had no control or rare so yeah it, it was really something i kind of forgotten about honestly I, I'm exactly the same when I was, I used to have visits with my dad, my dad crossed over when mom was pregnant with me. And mm -hmm. I used to go over to the other side and literally sit on the stairs and have conversations with them, oh. which is, oh, goosebumps. Yeah. Um, and that went away as I grew into my older teens, that went away. And I thought, okay, that's just, it was just me being mental. Basically I was going crazy. <laughs> um, when did you realize you had to do something with it? When was, what was that moment? Then was there, or was there one moment where you went, ah. um, Yeah, a couple of different moments, I guess. Um, so one, interestingly enough, you know, for a number of years, I would just do readings for people for free and for fun and, you know, stuff. But um, oh, really? I went on a ghost and, uh, yeah, that didn't feel good for me because I thought this isn't entertaining. This isn't funny. No. And I no. didn't think I would have that experience. I just thought, oh, this is something to do with friends, right? It didn't occur to me. And when I got there, I went, oh, this isn't right. I have to do something. I have to learn how to do that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Funny that you say that because I would never go to a haunted house. Um, wax museums freaked me out. Uh, um, anything like that. I couldn't physically do. I would literally go into an anxiety attack to the point where I I couldn't breathe. I it wasn't it wasn't fun. Like you say, it's just no. This isn't fun. This is not. I would love to go to a haunted house now, though. Different now. Different oh yeah, now. bring it on. <laughs> yeah, like I think I'd still be scared now. crap. I'd still scare the crap out of myself, but it would be fun. <laughs> Yeah, but now you have tools to deal with it, so it'd exactly. be okay. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's. All I think that we matters. should. I think we should do a uh, virtual haunted house tour one time. I that think that would be, be fun. fun. Yeah, that'd be a I fun thing to do. do. It, for yeah. sure. <laughs> somebody, I don't know. This is somebody I think you know, Jean. G. I think it's Jean Tracks Kirking. She's watching on one of your channels. Oh yeah, yeah, yep, absolutely, is, yep. She's is one of my people. She's a, she's like you got to come to my house. <laughs> I'll give oh, you directions. In the comments, I wasn't even looking at her there. Oh man, it's hilarious. I, I would clean it up. That's what I would do. That's what I do. <laughs> I do that quite often when I'm dealing with a client. It's like, yeah. and I say I'm getting interference. It's like the radio stations off. You know, the old dial where you'd have yeah. to tune it in. It's you get that static when I'm trying to do a reading for a client. If there's lots of lost souls. I'll be like, I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to yep. take a minute or two here. And I literally clear the house because I have to. <laughs> it's the right thing to do. And also you can't really perform under those conditions. Oh, yeah. It's it's not fun. Because <laughs> you're, you're struggling through the whole reading, right? No. No, definitely not. So adulthood hits you... Um, decide you're going to take this a little more seriously is would that be correct 
Yeah. So then um, when I decided, um, you know, it just kept getting stronger and stronger and I couldn't ignore it. I couldn't, you know, because I was still pretty closeted. I didn't really talk about people. So I could do that and I'd do a reading or decided to officially like I'm going to pursue the classes to like uh, the whole healing aspect at least because, you know, the other stuff I could do, but I needed to know how to do the healing. Um, so when I outed myself to everybody, I wasn't sure how that would go. I thought, oh boy, you know, but most people were just, uh, we already kind of figured that. I was like, oh, really? Oh, okay. So it wasn't even a big deal. Oh, I had made it up in my mind that it would be a big thing and it wasn't at all. Yeah. That's, you know what? Um, after I took Ken's, I think it was uh, level two when he told us to go out and do 20 readings, I was really nervous about asking oh, yeah. people. And I put it on my Facebook page and I was amazed how receptive, not everybody, some people weren't as receptive, which I expected. I expected more people not to be re um, receptive, but um, it was pretty, pretty easy. I would say yep. I was, I, yep. I, I, mean, I wasn't traumatized by the negative feedback, I'll say. Yeah, you kind of, and the longer you do this work, you just understand where they're coming from. And, you know, in the beginning, I had this notion that I had to change their mind or I had to help them. And, and you get to a point where you're like, number one, it's none of my business. If they want my help, yeah. they'll ask. Number two, they're not in a place to receive what I have to say. So that could actually do more harm than good. So I'll be here yes. if you are ready. And that's it. I always tell people, I'm not here to convince you what I do is real. Um yeah. It's, it's just not my job. No. Um, if when, when you're ready to receive a message, give me a shout. Um, yep. Till then, toodaloo. Have a, yep. I mean, I, I have no hard feelings and I don't. I'm still friends with lots of people who think I'm nuts. They thought yep. I was nuts before. They just think I'm nuts for a different reason now. Exactly, right? Now they just fuel to the fire. <laughs> exactly. So you took your courses and you decided, let's do this. Um, mm -hmm. and is that when you started Jenna Bierman channeling? Yeah, I want to say I started it in 2019. Um, so before oh, okay. that, you know, I, I had had a lot of experience, but you know, I never charged people. So that, that was scary for me to make it official and charge. Yeah. Cause I, I was like, wow, that's a whole new level of pressure. Yeah. But it was fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> Again, you build it up in your head like, oh, you know, who's going to pay me to, to help them? Well, oh, exactly. Yeah. I guess I am good at that. So, yeah, I probably, you know, should do this as a living so that I can actually dedicate time to it versus, you know, a hobby like it was before. So you do this full time now? I do. Yep. This is what I do for a living. Yep. Yep. I live in the same. Freaking, I'm, I take my hat off to you. Um, I think it's there's going to be more and more of us doing what we do for a living as yep. we become more mainstream. And I'm sure you have found probably over the last year or so, um, it is becoming more mainstream. More yep. people are accepting what we're doing. Yeah, yeah it's not taboo anymore. I mean, people are just curious and they don't feel so scared of it anymore. So. I mean, yeah. it makes our jobs a lot easier. Yeah. Oh, for, for sure. sure. For sure. Um, so, sorry, I'm reading comments and someone says, I'd love to know how to do this oh, as a living. <laughs> I'm just reading as we're talking because my setup's a little different than oh. yours. Uh, yeah. I see what? the I comments, can... but I keep you know, forgetting to look. Here, I can put them up there so they'll come up now on okay. the side of the screen there. Cool. I think. Yeah, yeah I think the new ones will. Um, how do you do this as a living? There's a great question. If you were to, first off, do you agree with me that this isn't a gift that anybody can learn to do what we do? 100%. Um, it is your Thank divine you. birthright. Nobody's special. Nobody's special. Thank you. That's a big I, myth, and I hate that myth. I'm, so, I, I'm glad you used that word because that's how I feel. I absolutely it infuriates me when I hear a psychic or a medium or a channeler say, well, I have this gift and I'm going to be so honored. I'm going to be so nice. I'm going to pass this gift to you and I'm going to give you a message. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's ego. That has nothing to do with wanting to help people. That's I went to school. 
I went to school. See those plaques on the wall? I went to school to yeah. learn to do this, just like a massage therapist, a dentist, a hairdresser, whatever yeah. profession <laughs> you choose, you can learn to do this. 100%. Yeah, it is a profession. It's not just, I mean, there are people out there who are just casually whatever. And I yes. always kind of put it this way, especially with healing. You want somebody who knows what they're doing, continues to learn, continues to grow, is open to suggestion, is open to, you know, I've learned this and this doesn't work. Um, somebody who's spouting off how great they are and this, that, run the other direction because th th you're not going to get what you need out of that. A hundred percent. Um yeah. I'm so glad you said that. I ooh, I got goosebumps on my goosebumps. But it's so important because I know a lot of um, people are listening aren't in the spirit. Well, I hate this word, but the spiritual industry. Um, sure. And five years ago, I can remember going to a psychic fair. More than that, I'll go back well over a decade ago. I can remember going to a spiritual fair with my ex-wife well over a decade ago. And... Um, it was like the fringe of society at these things. <laughs> it uh -huh. was like, I remember walking and going, oh, we've walked into the twilight zone. Uh-huh, hundred <laughs> percent. I had the same experience back in the day. And I was like, I do not, not want to be associated with this. That's exactly what I thought. Because even then, I mean, I was still seeing things I shouldn't be seeing. And I was yeah. like, this is why I'm burying this because... That, I don't want to be part of this crowd. Nope. It, that's entertainment. That's yes. what that is. And I don't know all the time. Now you go to a spiritual fair and I, my guides are just shaking their heads I'm, as I'm about to say this. There's like regular people like you and I, <laughs> normal. My guides are like, did you just call yourself normal, Kevin? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> I know. I'm like, but, oh, I don't know about that word for us. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're a lot of things. We're not normal, but you know, more mainstream than what it used to yeah. be with the things in your hair and crystal balls and. Uh, yeah, it's so obviously, you know, I do a lot of expos and, and you do still see a lot of that, but then you see a lot of professionals. So what I always say to people, I'm like, I'm not here to convince you. I'm not entertainment. If you want serious healing, serious work, that's me. I'm fun. Don't, don't get me wrong. We can have a great time, but I'm not somebody who's going to wear the crown and the, the fairy wings. That's not me. So like, if you want that, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm not your person. And they're, I'm not they're down the other aisle. Go, go, go talk to them. <laughs> yeah. And I've had people ask me because they do a lot of private events too, like where people will come for a healing night. Stuff. And I've been asked to do like an entertainment night. I'm like, no. Not like that. I'll do readings, yes, but not in a kitschy way where you want me, you know, to act like, no, I don't do that. Yeah. No. That's a disgrace to the profession. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, you can do group readings where um, um, you get up on stage. Graham and I did it uh, in July when he was up here. And yeah. we actually did mini readings just live. Um, and it was amazing. It was the first time either of us had done anything close to it, to that extreme. Awesome. And it was a blast. I'm actually doing something on Thursday locally here. Same kind of idea. Yeah. Um, but you're right. The theatrics need to stop. That's old school. Yep. I agree. I just really, um, I don't know. And then I've seen too, here's the other part that it really bothers me. Now, we all have to make a living. You know, we can't do this for free. We have bills to pay. But I've seen at expos of people charging just insane amounts. And the problem with that is people tend to value something that's more thinking it's better. But then they end up leaving and they didn't get anything. And then they end up at my booth and they dropped $120 for 15 minutes and nothing, nothing came of it. So I really, I'm really bothered by the ethics of that. Like, yeah, make your money. We all have to make money. But that's that's not ethical that's not ethical i and yeah. I, this is what i struggle a lot of times because i don't charge a lot of money for my readings i don't um yeah i can, i probably should charge more um because there is value to what we do and you're right we have yeah. to pay the bills but yeah. there is other people out there i just saw a famous 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 um psychic tv psychic um he does zoom readings 10 people on a zoom mm -hmm. reading 10 
sorry, I did five, 10 people on a Zoom reading. I can count. <laughs> $625 per person. Whoa. Ouch. I get nuts. you're famous, buddy. I get you're famous. That's cool. I, I, I'm a bit That's of a nuts. fanboy for this guy. Um, I was shocked. I was like, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. I mean, that's the thing. People always say, well, if you can get it, charge it. And I'm like, mm, it depends on what your what your motive is. If your motive is truly to be of service and help, you're going to make it at an affordable price point because the people who need the help the most don't have that kind of money. That's, you okay. know what? I guess it's my upbringing. I mean, we came, I came from a very, very humble beginning. Um, Absolutely. Mom was a single mom raising us. Um, we we didn't have a lot of money. We lived in the projects in, in Vancouver, down in British Columbia on the West Coast. And there was no way she could have afforded $100 or even $50 for to no have someone do a reading for her. She would never have done it being a Catholic. But no, no, <laughs> there wasn't that kind of extra money laying around. No. So I get that. Um, no, it wasn't Chip Coffee. Chip Coffee is one of my heroes. Um, Al Allison and I went to see Chip Coffee, and he actually gave me a reading just oh, really? shortly after my brother died. Um, a couple of years after my brother died, it was special. Um, awesome. Allison still has his scarf. He gives away a scarf, um, he really? a raffle ticket, and he oh. gives away a scarf. And it was really funny. Even back then, no training whatsoever. I went, "That's the number. That's the ticket that's going to win." And I pointed <laughs> to one of Allison's ticket, and it was the one that won. <laughs> Of course, of course. It was just and one of like, those things, God. right? Um, wow, we're, we're just all over the place. I love this, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> just, I do. I, do just, <laughs> I, I love these conversations because I and I we talked about this before we came live and kind of I kind of tried to explain why I do these and it's not I'm trying to interview Jenna so Jenna can go on and get 25 more customers. Sorry, clients. Yeah. Um, I know, right? It would be great if if anybody who wanted a reading gets a hold of Jenna. That's awesome. But that's not why I do this. What I the reason I do this is if we share our stories and somebody hears something and they go, "Oh, you know what? That's a lot like me." Yep. And they step into their spirituality. Oh, I got goosebumps on my goosebumps. Me too. Gosh, how cool is that? I mean. It's a, I know I have so many clients that have gone on and taken uh, Ken's courses yeah. and they blow me away because they're like, oh, I just want to thank you because without you, I would never have done this. And I'm like, really? You trusted me? <laughs> you trusted me? <laughs> you get right? it. Because right? you're like, to you, it was no big deal, right? You're just doing your job. But to them, it's everything. So sometimes I have to really remember that. Like, I really just changed their life. And all I was doing is just that that's all that's that all you got to do is show up. That's it. That's the only requirement. Just show up. Just show up and be open. That's right. It works right? every single time. So you do, you kind of go down a different road than I have. Um, you yeah. do way more expos. Yes, I do. Um, so we tend to have two expo seasons here, like fall and spring. There's not much in summer. So um, a lot of them, this this year that I maybe did previously are so far away that, you know, I've scaled back a little bit because I've got little kids, but I'm still doing quite a few. And the interesting part is I function very different there versus, you know, in a client session that I'm working at home because you have 15 minutes with those people and I get a ton done in that time, but you have to really there's no time for story, right? I get in, I see what they need and we get it done because I might not see them again and I want them to leave in as healthy a place as possible, right? Because that will change their life. So it's awesome. it's exciting. Yeah. So when you're doing your expos, do you, are you just doing mediumship or is there more to it than what just mediumship? No. So um, I do mediumship, but um, it's, it's healing. It's the whole package. It's, you know, the, the past life healings, um, all everything it's it's really literally because i have a list of stuff that's only a partial of what i can do but people you know need to see bullet points and they think they have to pick one i'm like oh no 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 you'll get whatever you need just sit down that's all just i sit need down to do. do this yep and, and open this right i know exactly what to do i'm guided and i just get to work 
Do you agree that channeling is a basis for all of it, though? When you yes. You cannot be an effective healer without having um, strong channeling. You just can't. You and it's work. funny because I've talked to so many people that have taken Reiki and they, they did their Akashic records and then they did channeling. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so you like doing things backwards? Because <laughs> to yeah. me, it's like channeling was, I don't know how you would do Reiki without channeling. Um, even tarot cards. How do you do tarot cards? Uh, Ellis and I went to a psychic fair. We had someone do a reading for us with tarot cards. It was amazing. Accurate as accurate can be. And when she finished, I went, wow, you're a really good channeler. And she goes, oh, I don't channel. Yeah, you do. Please don't realize <laughs> they Yeah, don't, we, they it, don't realize it. So, it comes from the cards. No, it comes from your guides or my guides, but you're channeling. Those are just a tool. Yeah, they're just a tool. And the other thing that I always, it kind of surprises people, um, every single one of us has channeled, whether you know it or not. Oh, yes. for some reason, I'm taking this route today. For some reason, you're channeling. You just don't call it that because you're expecting it to be some in your face, you know, Hollywood experience. It's just not like that. It's not. Um, it's as far no. from the Hollywood medium. Anything medium from Hollywood, it's the exact opposite. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's just it's, not like that. It's boring in comparison. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 It's not, there's no trumpets blaring and I give my guides crap all the time. I'm like, where's the trumpets? Where's the violins? Where's the thing? Where's the red carpet? I mean, come on, roll it out here. What's going on? Yeah, I know. It's just not like that. But we have to manage our expectations, right? Because we put those beliefs and limitations and then we stay in that box because that's our expectation. You have to get rid of expectations to do this kind of work. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Um... We, we kind of throw around words really easily when two people like like us, two people like us, so we're special. Oh, boy. <laughs> but we do. We, we throw around the words channeling. We throw around Akashic Records. Sure. We just throw words around expecting everybody's going to understand what we're talking about. That's right. So when you're, you have a client, they can, mm -hmm. holy crap, is it really 20 to 8 already? <laughs> 20 to 9, you're time, time. Right? Yeah. Um, I have to watch the time. Um, a client comes and sits down. Do you mm -hmm. open their Akashic Records? Do you like go through the whole? And it, please explain what Akashic Records is and kind of give us a tutorial of how you run your session. Yeah. So um, the Akashic Records, and some people say Akashic, some say Akashic. I, I say both just depending <laughs> on the mood. It doesn't matter. Um, it's, essentially it's what it is, right? It's, it doesn't matter. Um, it is literally uh, kind of like an energetic library. Anything and everything that's ever happened to is stored there, and it's always recording. So every thought, every belief, every trauma, right? And we keep reliving that stuff this lifetimes even uh, until we break that cycle. And this is the first lifetime where we really have the ability, and that's a whole other topic, to actually heal the soul at that level. So there's a lot of work to do. We've had thousands of lives. You know, it's not... I don't know. I think some people expect to heal everything in one session. It's just not possible, right? I don't yeah. think we're ever done healing, to be honest. Um, no. no. I think the healing continues even when we leave this vessel we call a body and That's we right. go home. Um, I'm continuously right. reminding people, we just visit Earth. We actually live in the astral realm. Um, right. We still get healing when we go home. It's just a continuous healing process. It's... Um, we're learning. And as we learn, we go, oh, I didn't even know I needed that healed. Right. What the heck was that? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the whole point of it is the grown learning. But um, maybe I should explain that too with the Akashic. So people say past lives when you're looking into the Akashic records. But the reality is that everything exists now. That's why we can heal it and manipulate it because nothing's really the past. It's all now. It's just a different timeline or XYZ. That's a whole nother topic. But um, we have really, the ability really to. Deep. Right, yes. we could be on that for like six hours for sure. But um, <laughs> like running an actual session though, for me, it looks very different now than it did in the beginning. I'm never not channeling. I mean, I'm just always channeling in life constantly. So I don't have to go through, right? You just get to that point and that helps you in life anyway. Well, yeah. It, it people always ask me how I connect. Anymore. No, people always ask me how I connect and I'm like, just do. I'm connected. 
I, I don't disconnect. I don't think anybody disconnects, to be honest. Yep. And I came to that realization just recently is everybody's connected. It's whether you're open to hearing or not. Correct. Correct. That's exactly right. Yeah. 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 So uh, it, it's, yeah, in the beginning, you, know, you just, you know, X, Y, Z, but you don't have to down the road. You just know what to do. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, if someone, not everybody lives in your beautiful neck of the woods, Wisconsin? No. Where do you live again? Yeah, that's Wisconsin. You got Wisconsin. it. Wisconsin. I was like, that's not, in my head, I'm like, that's not right. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. You got um, it. You are they, do you do Zoom? Do you do Zoom sessions? Yeah. So most of my business is through video. So I use Google Meet, but it's, it's the same as Zoom. It just works with my software. Um, and then I do in person in my home as well. And then expos, but most of my business is video. So it doesn't matter where oh, you are. It? Yep. And it doesn't matter if you're in person or not. The healing works the same. Oh, uh, yep. yeah. Um, I, I, uh, that's a question I get a lot is because yes. I don't do healing. I, I literally give messages from guides, which I yeah. guess is a type of healing and yeah. mediumship. Um, and people are like, you can do that over Zoom. And I'm like, yeah, you're right there. Like, I don't even need to look at you. It's nice to because I hate doing this. And if you were just blank, it's kind of boring. But um, yeah, I could do it over the phone. Nice. Yep, exactly. Right? No, nope, it doesn't um, matter. Energy. When you're doing energy healing, you don't even need to be present. Nope. doesn't have to be like that at all. So it, it's interesting. Like um, energy, like and people will say, well, how do you connect into the soul? It's literally you have the intention. That is who you will get. It's that simple. We overcomplicate <laughs> stuff. Someone asked me that today. Well, how do, I know, like, how do I do that? And I'm like, you just did. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, well, you just thought, how do I connect to my soul? And you connected to your soul because you had that intention. How do I pick up my phone? Yep. I just grab it. I don't think about it. I just pick it up. That's right. Um, how do I write? You don't think about writing anymore. You just write. Nobody yeah. writes anymore. Okay, you type. <laughs> yeah, the writing is kind of lost art. That's right. But yeah, no, it it's they just they don't believe in themselves. They don't believe, well, there's no way I could have done that. That's what it is. It's self doubt. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. Um, if you could go back, mm -hmm. um, your 13 year old self and you could give that 13 year old self advice besides buy stock in Apple, um, right? <laughs> or Google, yeah. <laughs> uh, spiritually, what would you give your 13 year old self? What would you tell your, th oh, that's a good question. That was planned from yeah. your guide, by the way. That's powerful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I would probably tell her that most of the stuff that I was worried about doesn't matter. And, and to just really be myself instead of what everybody else wanted me to be, because I spent a lot of time people pleasing and trying to be something I wasn't, because I felt like I had to compensate for all my other weirdness in that. And it wasn't fun. I didn't feel good. I didn't even know who I was back then. And you were still weird. Yeah, I was so weird. It didn't help. <laughs> no. I, I, I can speak from experience. I tried to become one of the people, and I was I like tried. the weird guy. I was yep, always that weird hurt. guy within the in the group, right? But absolutely, um, it's amazing that I'm fifty plus years old and just realizing now. It's like it didn't. You're right. All that other shit doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. That I know, and it's like. The time it feels like it's the end of the world to you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh my goodness, and it's like, yeah, it's like the end of the world. Definitely. Um, right. I'm gonna go there. Your guides are all over the place, by the way. I love them, but oh my god, you gotta slow. <laughs> my <that> apologies. Down. <laughs> it's like a hundred. That's how I work. I am never. You I've work 100 ADHD. miles an hour. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like, whoa slow down. Yep. And they have to learn That's one at a time. Function, so you're welcome. It's, it's like one at a time. Come on, one. No, stop. <laughs> one. Not Good two luck. or three. One. <laughs> you're hilarious. Um, where, does, where do you see yourself um, going forward? Like, what's your, we all have goals. Um, yeah. 
and we all, especially with our, with a business being an entrepreneur, um, yeah. where do you see yourself? What do you want to do? Where do you see yourself going? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm always building up my clientele, you know, through expos and stuff. And I guess my, if I look down the road, I want to be doing the same that I'm doing, but I want to be able to reach more people. And I like the idea when I've got more time, I want to be teaching and do that sort of stuff. And I also, I'm writing a book and I just don't have the time to finish it. So there's so many things I'm starting though with little kids. It's like, I know it'll come, but like, there's nothing else I'd rather do. I would just kind of, you know, expand on all of it. It's funny because when you were, when they, when they asked the question, then they were kind of showing me, they literally, I, they're showing me you, I'm just going to say it on stage, but not doing like a mediumship you're on stage giving a seminar it's like a ted talk kind of idea yeah and interestingly enough um this expo season i started so i've been doing speaking at expos for a long time but there were half hour slots and you just talk about something well this year i decided to do group healings and then weekend i did two sessions where i actually put people in their own records i had like well over 45 people in each session wow. so it's like, i didn't know i was you don't know till you do it because it's like, well, shit, is this going to work or not? Oh, excuse my language. Um, but it, it worked just fine, right? But you have to try it to know what you're capable of. And I loved it. So, yes, being on stage, yes, I absolutely love that because you can help so many people at one time. Anybody that knows me knows that I love the spotlight. There's no, there. I like, I like being the center of attention. It's just one of those things. Some people think it's a... Uh, personality fault I don't think so um somebody has to be yeah um true. and um I'm along with you I could see myself on stage but doing mediumship um yeah. where you're doing your healing I and it's funny because I keep in my head I keep going well why isn't there a you see like uh comedian night where you have four or five comedians go up on stage why don't they do that for healers That'd people awesome. like ourselves where instead of just having one like a chip coffee go up and do a thing why not do like three or four then do a chip coffee do you know what i mean we sh you should start that I'll, I'll be your first guest let's do it it's like i just think it's Again, I think when we're moving into the mainstream, I think you're going to see more and more of that kind of thing happening. Yes. I love that thought. That's a great, I mean, I, I hadn't thought about it like that. That's genius, actually. Well, yeah. it, it, it was one to me. I mean, it's always inside the head, right? And it's like, why not? I mean, right. why not do, Ken and I did it uh, when we did our um, Spirituality is Fun Expo in Canmore uh, mm -hmm. in July, July 2nd. And we had like Akashic Records people get up and talk. Uh, we had Graham and I do a uh, mediumship. We had somebody else go up and do a healing, uh, similar to what you were talking about. And then Ken got up and did his connecting with his spirits, connecting with your spirit guides for the whole group. And it went over amazing. Yeah. Like we packed the place. There was probably 75, 80 people that stayed there for six hours. That's awesome right I it was kind of cool so um you, my light bulbs are going off again <laughs> yeah start taking notes right all these things exactly. to do right it's work Kevin. what are you doing uh, uh yeah I'm going to winnipeg my ellison's brother-in-law passed away a couple months back and oh. um we're, a whole bunch of us are getting together. He was a big Winnipeg Blue Bombers fan, which is the Canadian Football League up here. And so a whole bunch of us are getting together. I think there's 10 of us and going to a Winnipeg game uh, in his honor. And we might even sprinkle a few ashes around. And... I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be really cool. Um, I'm looking forward to it, actually. Um, I love that. If people wanted to get a hold of you, what's the easiest way for people to get a hold of you? Yeah, so um, the easiest way to find out where I'm at, because to be honest, I'm not the best at keeping my website up to date with events, but uh, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> uh, I don't exactly love the admin work. It's a work in progress for me. But anyway, yeah. I just want to be out doing doing the, the fun doing stuff. You right? want to do it. Yeah, exactly. But um 
email, uh, going on my Facebook, uh, text me, phone call, at pretty much anything. If, but Facebook is a really, really easy way to find me and connect. Um, I'm always, you know, you get alerts on your phone, but my business number, all that too. I'm always, it's right on my phone. So I always get to that. So really, however, is you're comfortable. Yeah. And you keep Facebook, you, you post regularly on Facebook so people can yep. really pay attention and find what you're doing. Your website, yep. what is your website again? It's jbchanneling.com. jbchanneling.com. Nice That's and right. easy uh, to get to. Um, and yep. they can book us, can they book a session through your website or? Yep, yep. you book it online. Um, the only thing is if you're plan and it says it on there too if you want it to be in person you just kind of gotta shoot me a message to make sure yeah. that i'm you know kiddos but otherwise video anytime that's open go for it you're good to go nice yeah nice yeah you offer more than just one or like you have a list of stuff that you can offer like your but your sessions you leave that's do you right. leave open um where you don't just say i'm gonna do akashic records you're gonna do everything in a session yeah, pretty much any session, it's just you're going to get exactly what you need. You'll, I'm never doing one modality because it, it would just be scratching the surface. So yeah. you just show up and people will say, I don't know, do I book communication or healing? It doesn't matter. All I need is you to show up and I'll, I'll get it figured out. Just pick yeah. what you think I mean, you like. <laughs> it was funny because I was listing all kinds of different things on my Facebook page. And my guides are like, why? Just put, just put a one-hour session. <laughs> I know. We complicate it. But people like the buzzwords too right because they, they're trying to understand yeah and they think they know what they're looking for just kind of have to make that all work together that's right uh chelsea ryan sanchez um she's i can't wait to book my next session with jenna oh, <laughs> you probably can't her. see that oh, yet I it takes her. a while for her to come up there yeah she's such a sweetheart i haven't seen her in a minute but yeah she's a sweetheart i always love working with her Nice. I have the best nice. life in the world. I really do. I, I get to do what I love for a living. Are it's actually possible because I have the best clients in the world. Oh, so. All right. I'll fight you for it. I'll fight you. <laughs> but, and I tell my clients all the time, and I'm, I, I'm getting that you'll probably agree with this, is we get just as much out of giving a reading as you do getting a reading. Absolutely. Um, I always tell people it makes my soul glow. Um, there's yeah. no other explanation how I can explain it, um, except to say it makes my soul glow. Um, there's some sessions where I struggle. I'm not going to lie. Um, there's some yeah. sessions that are tougher than others. Yeah. Um, there's other sessions where you just leave. You leave and you're glowing. It's just like, oh my goodness, yeah. this is what I, this is what I want to do. <laughs> it feels good. I mean, so what that is, two things. Number one, when you're fulfilling, so everybody has a need to to be of service, but we all do it in a different way. So when you're doing that, you feel good. But the other piece is you're in alignment. You're doing what you're here to do. So it's going to feel yes. good, right? doesn't mean it will be easy, but it will feel good and it will be worth it. You know you're doing what you're supposed to. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, are you finding that you're getting more, I'm going to use the word practitioners, mm -hmm. um, myself coming to you, um, people like myself coming to you for a session, um more and more so yeah. lately yes um a lot of burnout going on it's been a hot mess in the world so the healers need healing and we're the worst at getting healing because we don't take yeah. time for ourselves it's garbage it's silly so i get a lot of that but then i get a lot of practitioners too who um are wanting to learn more they want to grow they want to do xyz so they come for that kind of mentorship and learning because you know they they tend to get to we all get to that point where it's like yeah, I think I'm ready to do something different, but I don't know what. And you just, sometimes you can't get out of your own head. You need somebody else to help you with that. Yeah, I get it so often where they're like, I channel, like I do, I, yeah. I do, I'm a medium. I, I literally do mediumship a whole bunch. Yet when I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do, my guides go silent. And I'm like, no, you guys aren't silent. Trust me. <laughs> your guides are never silent. Yeah, and for that... No, that but like when it's involving you, sometimes you cannot be neutral and get the answers. You just can't. You need somebody else because you're you're so involved in it and you're gonna like color choices based on your experience. And so you're not purely channeling sometimes you're you're coloring it. So that's why you sometimes need an outsider to go, okay, what am I doing here for sure? 
Yes. It's funny because sometimes um, you feel like you're a life coach, a business coach, <laughs> etc. cetera, um, yep. right? A counselor, a marriage counselor <laughs> is all bundled up into one. Oh, I get a lot of calls. Yep. And people are like, well, how do you know this stuff? And I'm like, well, I don't. You have to understand when I'm doing a session, it's not me giving you what's inside Kevin's head because you don't want to hear that. It's literally, I'm getting it from your guides who know. <laughs> no, nobody does. Trust me. Ask Allison. She'll tell you. <laughs> you, I'm curious you don't want to know what's happening inside. She has to hear it when I'm sleeping. So lots of times I'll say things. She'll wake me up and go, what are you? I'm like, oh, what did I do now? <laughs> Are you okay, Kevin? <laughs> oh, many, not so much lately um, since I started channeling, pre-channeling. Uh, she would tell me some of the mm. things I would say in my sleep, and it was just like, whoa, messed up. Uh, I'm working. <laughs> but your guides know your, your purpose. They know why you chose yeah. to incarnate in 2022. Because we're nuts. That's why we chose to incarnate in 2022. Uh, well. You do need a level of insanity for sure. But the, the other piece of that too is really like truly it's about where I see a lot of healers or channelers get stuck is they want to control everything. They want to understand everything. They want answers for everything. You will not get that and you will not grow until you let that go and surrender and just show up because you're limiting yourself and your guides will even say they're just like, we're not doing this. You you are. And then you're like, oh, damn it. I, ah, I'm, I'm in charge of my own troubles that sucks right but it's true but you told no we didn't tell you to do that i can guarantee you <laughs> right yeah how many times no, have you heard nice it? Try. yeah exactly sure. exactly holy crap it's been an hour I how did know, how did that so go by so quickly young lady about like 10 minutes like we could just talk all night i love chatting with you this is so fun <laughs> I must tell you, I hope Allison's listening. You made Allison's um, day. You made a comment on her Facebook. Um, she had posted that collage of selfies of her yeah. and I, and you told her how beautiful she was and that the camera loves her. I tell her that all the time. Um, she was, she, and she, even when she got home from work today, she said, I can't believe how nice that comment was. So I must tell you how much you, that made her day. Well, I'm glad that that's, I think husband, your opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> she needs to hear it from somebody else. And and honestly, it's so funny. Um, I you know, I watch you guys, watch your posts and all that all the time. And every time I see her, I there's just something about her that I just I find so beautiful. I can't even put it into words. I just I just love her and I've never even met her. I just love her. She is um she's one of those souls that has been through literal hell and back um, in this lifetime, not let alone neither to lifetimes, but in this to lifetime, I could tell you horror stories. Aww. And when you see her smile, it just radiates. She doesn't realize how much she radiates across the room. And I'm probably really embarrassing her right now. And she's going to give me shit when I go downstairs. But Allison, you're, you're just Sorry. the most beautiful woman. Um, and if wasn't for her, I wouldn't be doing what I do. She was the one who convinced me to take that first step and take level one. Her and I did it together. So That's it's, awesome. um, and I tell that story all the time. So, and I love you. Uh, now that sappiness is over. I know, Jenna, me so <laughs> thank you so much. Um, thank you for having me. I've wanted to reach out to you for a long time and it, the timing never worked. So um, finally, yeah. when I was like, okay, where am I going next? And my guides just pop, you popped up, literally popped up on my screen. And I went, oh, yeah, okay. And I messaged you. And there's a reason there's always, there's never just a coincidence why I'm interviewing this person or that person. It's There's always a reason. Um, people, if you want um, to a session with Jenna, check her out on Facebook, Jenna uh, Beerman Channeling on Facebook. Um, probably the easiest way, all her info's there. Um, if you're down in yep. her area, check her out at one of her um, expos. Um, I hear great things. I love your table. I think you've got one of the nicest tables I've seen at the expos. There, it's always oh, so nice, nicely set you. up. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you for taking an hour and spending it with me. 
Thank you. I, I seriously, I've been waiting for you to ask me, and I was like, is it Aww. weird if I ask? No, if, and people, if, you ask I want to say this. Me. I'm going to go a little overtime. If you're out there and you do any kind of healing, if you're a channeler of any kind, and I haven't reached out to you, reach out to me. Send me a message. Um, I guess it's the... Um, the imposter syndrome, I call it, where I, I don't think people want to be interviewed. So I have to like almost, I feel like I have to go out and go, oh, please, please let me interview. Oh, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, not true, Kevin. No, people, no, absolutely not. So you if you're out there, you're if you were like Jen and saying, why hasn't he asked me? Reach out, ask me. I mean, I will get you on sooner or later. I'm, I think this month is pretty much booked, but there's November, there's December, January, February, March. There's lots of times. So if you want, reach out. Um, it's a fun hour, as you can see. We had a great time. We had a blast. Thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to put you into the waiting room, but don't go anywhere. Okay. Thank you. Thank Back you into the waiting watching. room you go. Aww. <laughs> wow. What an hour. That was incredible. Bring Jenna back again. I am definitely going to bring Jenna back again. Without a doubt, you can be guaranteed, probably in the new year, um, Jenna will be back on. We'll be chatting again because that was amazing. And we only touched about that much of what she does. So thank you, everybody. And I hope uh, you have a great evening. Um, I won't be on next week because it is Canada's Thanksgiving next week. I know America's as far in the future, but next weekend is Canada's Thanksgiving. So I won't be on next week, but the weekend after I will be on. And um, my guest then will be Selly. And I'm going to mess up your last name, Selly, because that's what I do. I think it's Match. Mage. I got it wrong. Selly, you know who you are. I will be promoting it. Uh, take a look at my Facebook. If you want to book a session with me, go to channeling uh, Cavelli Channeling on my Facebook and click the book now. You'll see all my availability. Uh, I'm going to be taking this rest of this week off, um, going out to Winnipeg, as I was saying to Jenna. And I'll be back next Tuesday so we can start booking again from there. Until next two weeks, take care.